Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom, episode 10, recorded Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. You're listening to Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam, and you've just listened to the introduction from Philip Bauer from Munich, who is getting Hi. a call. <laughs> hey, Fred, Hi, Philip. Yeah. My We're mother-in-law back. just called complaining about the music, I guess. Okay. How are you, Fred? You're back from vacation? Back from vacation. Been to Southern Europe for two, two and a half uh, weeks. We, we first wanted to... Uh, try and find a camper which didn't really work we did that a few years ago and then we just picked two spots i said okay just uh, find a small apartment there so i've never been to can you believe it i'm i'm in the middle of my 40s i'm living in europe i've never been to the Côte d'Azur oh so i was there for the first time uh good and uh after a week we uh, uh we kind of traveled uh, half a day to the east and were in northern italy piemont that's which, nice. I've never, which I've also never been to. I've been to quite a few places in Italy, thanks to, to Plone and the Plone community, with very nice events, which we talked about last year. But I've never been in that, that upper left spot. Yeah, was... I've never been there either. But I've been to Italy too. I've been uh, in the region of um, Florence, in, in, in Tuscany. Uh, yeah, we took the train, nice. which is, uh, so I'm proud of myself, uh, for not ruining this planet any further, at least not during that holiday. And I actually met uh, Eric Steele, the release manager, and we went on holiday together with his family and mine. Uh, so that was great. We just wanted to see Italy before it descends into dark fascist uh, nightmare that uh, no, 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 happened no, no. today. Yeah, today. I don't know. I don't know. I hope the food, I hope the food was still good. The food is excellent as always and, and you're more of a beer, beer person right or no no i'm fine with wine oh then you should really go to piemont it's it's we were in a small uh, town and uh, uh, up on the on the, on the on the hill well for me uh, i'm not sure for me it was a mountain uh, and there was vineyards everywhere to the nearest town we just have to travel 15 minutes through vineyards first uh, to, to get there Excellent. Uh, another local thing is truffles, but we were a bit too early for that. That's in November, I think they start using uh, pigs to, to, to scavenge for, for, for truffles in nature. Uh, and hazelnuts. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah on, on, a... on the way there, we had uh, like burned fields left and right. That was not very romantic, but uh, <laughs> that was summer in Europe for you. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It still, it was great holidays and we really enjoyed it. So yeah. um, welcome to the we, the second episode, uh, the second season, not the second episode, yeah. so actually the 10th episode. And it, we are starting the second season of TPN, the Plo Newsroom. Yeah. And uh, we don't have but, a theme song yet, but uh, we're, we're trying to get there. <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. Maybe maybe that's what and we're also discussing already uh, our, our, our next month's uh, recording, which will be very special. Uh, more about that oh, yeah. in, a few, in a few minutes or maybe 10 minutes. Uh, and indeed, we, we, we chat about, should we do season two, episode one, or but we'll just continue numbering with a fine, uh, uh, very valid uh, argument from Philip that it just looks very much nicer in, in podcast readers where you just number and continue. And maybe we can reach the 100 uh, uh, sometimes or maybe first go for a 25 or 50. Yeah, when we're we'll just continue numbering uh, and, and forget a bit about the seasons. But we just mentioned it. For us, this is, feels like season two. Yeah, so I've true. also, Philip, I've also been a bit longer away. I, I finally, after, after many years having two or three weeks vacation uh, and, and the past two years of COVID, I was really like, I need to have a bigger block. So I took some unpaid leave and uh, it, took, it took half a month to actually get <laughs> to the total shutdown of, of my brain and not think about or being able not to think about work and things. But I managed for, for most of August uh, to really uh, uh, go offline. Uh, Read books I had on my list. Uh, uh, do some hobby yeah, stuff so you at home. Haven't talked about clone or at all. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't work. But uh, I, I, the, the least, uh, the, the the minimum amount of of uh, what I was able to to not think about clone, I, I think I managed that. That's so it's good. nice to be back, and it takes some time to get used to. So what better way this week to start uh, recording a podcast with you? That's great. Yeah, I've I've actually been working most of the summer so no no leave for me at least no i i could take unpaid leave because every leave is unpaid because i'm self-employed but yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah. uh what are so, we going to talk news, about today? news um, yeah we've got uh we've got we, we we were like like should we do the podcast yes we should really start the podcast uh, uh uh in september and have some stuff because there is of course uh a new, another uh plan six beta beta 2 has been released by maritz somewhere last month where I 
can't remember the date, but we'll, show, uh, we'll look at it later. Um, we've got a bit of a, a pitch also from something that Maurit started uh, uh, with a uh, small poll uh, last month on the community about the supported Python versions, which I really would like to talk a bit more uh, 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 and uh, uh, show people some, some things that are coming up there. And we're going to talk about the conference that is coming up, obviously. What else? And we have what a else? special subject. So we have a real feature. And it's going to be, um, if you don't Portlets. know about that, it's going to melt your brain. Uh, you're, you're going to love it and hate it at the same time. Um, so uh, Plum Fixed uh, Beta 2, uh, actually no big news there at all, except for a ton of bug fixes, which is really good. And that's exactly what we want in a beta release. So the, the list of bug fixes is really long, but there was not like the one major bug. There were a couple small ones that annoyed me and others, uh, but there's no big feature obviously being added in a beta release. Uh, but we did something uh, on, on a meta level. So what we did, we, we officially dropped uh, support for Python 3.7 and added support for Python 3.10. Uh, so Plone, uh, the, the beta 2 still works in 3.7, so the, the tests were green there and is officially the last version that will support 3.7. Um, so let, let's talk about that a little. Yeah, so what has happened, uh, 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 I mean, we we talk about Plone, 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 but there's, uh, of course, Plone is built on the, on the shoulders of giants, as they often say in, in, uh, in IT, because uh, below Plone is the application server ZOAP, and below ZOAP is the programming language Python. And these are all separate open source projects. I mean, the ZOAP project has now been, been is also, uh, uh, how you call it? Uh, uh, now nah, forgot. It. It, it's 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 part of the it's part of the Plone Foundation. How you call this? Yes, it's a nice it's, it's part of the word family. For yeah. Part of the family, uh, also uh, uh, legal uh, uh, protections, etc. Um, but Python has its own uh, uh, its its own release schedule, and Python has has changed there uh, quite a bit in the in they the last few years. Lot, They've picked yeah. up speed, and they're releasing a new Python version every year. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, three eleven is already in release uh, candidate status. At the Which moment. looks very promising because there's yes. a lot of speed improvements and, and all the generic uh, runtime improvements there that will also help SOAP and of course Plone. But the, the, I wouldn't call it downside, but the downside is of course that if you have uh, every, uh, 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 every year another release, uh, then you also critically start to look at, at your deprecation schedule. And that's something else that has happened to Python in the recent years that um, Python version, new Python versions are deprecated uh, uh, quicker than they used to because there are just more releases. And just as with Plone, you don't want to, you cannot handle supporting six or seven or eight different releases. And that's why Marit, uh, our release manager, uh, uh, posted uh, a poll on communityplone.org, if I remember it was in August. Uh, about questioning, indeed, for Plone 6, which Python versions should we still support? And it's not only, uh, I, I now kind of blame it on, on, the, on the PSF, uh, this, but it's also our own, uh, our own infrastructure. Uh, I, I happen to also uh, uh, be part of the, admin, of the uh, uh, administration infrastructure team, and part of that is the testing uh, uh, infrastructure. Yeah, and there are also multiple versions. It all takes um, CPU cycles and we can handle setup three. and maintenance and stuff. Exactly, we can Annoying. handle three. We can handle four, uh, maybe five. But it's 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 quite a thing to to keep that all ju uh, juggled uh, correctly, um, and that's also why you you can't in indefinitely uh, add more uh, Python versions. So for the the poll was closed. Uh, I could do a screen sharing, but it's not really that relevant because you already said it in the last uh, last subject for Plone six. Uh, Python 3.7 will be dropped. Python 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10 will be supported. Maybe, hopefully, uh, uh, Python 3.11 will be added later. Yes. Um, but there's also another uh, interesting thing happening here is that our, our previous version, or actually the current active supported and latest version, Plone 5.2, um, is only supported up and until Python 3.8. And that's something that many people don't realize because there have already been two subsequent Python uh, releases 3.9 and 3.10, but these are officially not supported and are also not tested on our CI uh, infrastructure. And the a part of that is that uh, Plone 5.2 still uses SOAP 4, 
which still supports also Python 2. Uh, and there have been quite a few fixes in SOAP to support Python 3.9 and Python 3.10. And so that's SOAP 5, and SOAP 5 is beneath Plan 6. So it's all... It, Obviously, it, it, yeah. If, if I'm confusing people, that's, uh, <laughs> that is because it's a bit, a bit uh, complex, because there are all these relations in the stack from Python to SOAP to, uh, to Plone. Um, but that also means that uh, when we release Plone 6 somewhere in November, uh, then Plone 5.2 uh, is going, I mean, not, not, not that harsh, but is sort of going out of support because Python 3.8 will be supported until October 13th, 2024, I think. So that's two yeah, but, years. But there, are like, there are two positive aspects to that. Uh, that, to 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 ease or, ease your mind. One is uh, a upgra upgrading to a new Python version is usually a no brainer. You just pip, uh, pyenv install a new Python version or whatever uh, installation uh, method you fancy for Python, and then you just run it with the new Python version. You don't need to upgrade your database or your uh, your clone uh, system. Um, there's no upgrade steps you need to run. So it's basically a it's an admin job to update the Python version. Very much different from what we had to do between Python two yeah, and three, was, yeah, which yeah. Like, was like yeah. a huge effort, code wise and also database wise. Uh, so that is that is that's not an issue. And the other thing that uh, to keep in mind is that we kept uh, we we still keep five two in act active support by the Plone Foundation. That doesn't mean we're taking care of security updates on Plone, uh, Python 2.7, but hey, Python 2.7 was deprecated, uh, like not deprecated, discontinued. Security support for that was discontinued on January 1st, 2020. That's almost three years ago now. And yes. it's, still, it's still one of the supported versions, as long yeah. as there are no major security bugs in older Python versions, which they are not, uh, we're still good to go. And, and Philip, I, I, uh, we, still manage, we still host, maintain for some customers, some Plone for three sites, which were, of course, yeah, going obviously. to phase out. But I've also going to tell them, it's a Dutch, I don't know how it translates, but the soup isn't, uh, uh, is served much hotter uh, than it's eaten. And in this case as well, I mean, the Python uh, uh, programming language is always running on an operating system. And Red Hat, Ubuntu, uh, uh, SUSE, uh, whoever maintains all those, they have their own patches and they have long-term support contracts to, to their customers providing enterprise support for Linux. And they will continue to patch Python 2.7 as long as there's a, there's a large customer. Uh, don't don't, don't uh, say that aloud it. because most but clients, you don't want that because it's-, it's You don't want it. We, we just had this, uh, the, the situation with the client who was trying to compare an existing extranet, which was uh, intranet, which was running on Plone uh, 4.3, uh, with uh, some some other systems that they compared with, and uh, because they were still running on Python 2, and they didn't have time or I don't know money uh, or interest in upgrading, so they compared these two systems: one from a glossy um, marketing brochure, and one the existing internet, which is Plone. <laughs> but feature-wise, that is like 2013. Yeah, this is like this is 10 years old feature set of Plone, and you're comparing that with glossy brochures from uh, from from vendors. That just doesn't work. So please don't do that. No, of course, don't do that. But the other reverse is what you just said. We still have some Plone for three sites, and it's not the end of the world. But then still, you're getting very close to the edge because just like you said, you're comparing uh, 10, 12 years old technology and your users will definitely start to complain. Uh, the browser, uh, uh, the, the, the front end support for what, what Plone for three spits out is completely inadequate for today's uh, browsers or you're at least not using 80, 90% of the features. Exactly. So exactly don't do that that and phase it out as quickly as possible. But then again, uh, what we were going to, to talk about Plone 5.2, with the speeding up of the Python releases and the deprecation, uh, uh, that's that's the, the one of the reasons that Maurits put on this poll, and we need to critically look at, hey, which versions are we going to support? And also for yourself, if you, if you run into an issue, uh, um, first check which Python version you're using. So for Plone 5.2, if you uh, uh, submit a bug report or you run into a compilation issue, 
uh, yeah, I had you, you... exactly that that problem <laughs> because I I didn't take care of which version I I used three nine for a long time even in five two and some bizarre stuff yeah. happened yeah and uh, obviously you always blame the system and not yourself first yeah so that's uh, that's uh, there's there's an interesting discussion here check your pythons uh, use uh, if you're on uh, on Mac or Linux use pyenv to to manage your pythons uh, uh, so you can very quickly and easily install a new version that's what I've switched to uh, last year Bef two years ago I, I just uh, I'm on Mac and I used a, a brew but brew has this nasty habit of just shuffling and removing uh, all Python versions if the brew ecosystem doesn't need them anymore as soon as they've removed the last package that depends on Python 3.8.3 then with your next brew update uh, with the default settings, uh, Python 3A3 was gone. <laughs> that yeah, hit me hard a few is guys. My to use pyenv, pyenv install, and then uh, I actually I, I fought against the bug in CMF Plone, the one with the main template, the crazy hack that we added in Sorrento like three years ago, and I, it 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 turned out to be a Python problem, and to figure out which issue in uh, which bug fix in Python actually fixed that issue, I had to install all these different Python versions of 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and run, run and no, minor versions, uh, that's like the point, like 3, 8, 5, 3, 8, 6, 3, 8, and so on. So, and that's just command, ins you install them and run, uh, run, run uh, your clone against that until I found the, the real bug in Python that fixed the issue that we thought is a bug in clone itself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, let's let's so, let's finish that's, that's that up. The LT, but yeah, is, that's the LTS. There's support. one one more about um, six two beta two. Uh, obviously, we not only have we not only have uh, Python and pl and Plone the back end. We also have the front end. And since the beta one, there were like I, I can't even do the math. Uh, the the Volta release between uh, in in beta one was alpha sixteen, and now we're already at alpha thirty eight. So I, I imagine Victor waking up every morning doing say, oh, I could do a Volta release. <laughs> it's like it's like al almost every day there's a new release, and there's like a ton of bug fixes, small features, and not really big enough to re mention or demo at this uh, stage. Uh, but there, a lot of work has gone into uh, polishing Volto to be ready for prime time when uh, 6.0 final release actually mm -hmm. drops. I, I didn't have that much time uh, uh, before summer around June, July. Uh, but at that po moment, uh, looking at, at Plone 6 and the, and the alphas and the betas, it looked a bit like, like the classic part was almost finished and Volto was... Okay, what's going to happen there? I mean, the main feature, of course, for for uh, Volto to, uh, in the, in the Plone Six release is, is that it will be the stable version with some things that uh, 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 the, the Volto uh, 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 developers have figured out. Like, okay, we need to change this in uh, to we because we don't want to change it in a year from now because that would hurt people. And the, the, a lot, and the most important one is the editor which is going to be uh, the Slate editor, which has been added now. But uh, indeed, what you said, a lot of work has uh, uh, in the meantime been done over, over summer and also I think now in September, uh, which is uh, going to be a very nice polish on, on Volto. Yeah, there's still some work to do. I just tested uh, the, the example content type with all these field types and there are still issues with relation choice and whatnot. Uh, but it looks really nice, and I see see these even these small changes are making me really happy. Uh, a tiny thing that I really love, uh, David added when you edit something in Volto, you couldn't see which content type you were actually editing in the past, and now there is this there's like in, in the sidebar it says okay document or news item. Y you might think that's that that is that is. Sm not a big thing, but if you're constantly editing content and you take a short break and you don't know which content type you're editing at the moment or adding, uh, that may really be helpful. Uh, there, there, I think if you look at look at Plone, like like if you explain to people, look, Plone is is uh, a CMS that's twenty uh, twenty or twenty two years old now. When is the, uh, uh, the our birthday again? And people are like, oh, old, can't. But there there is. There are is years of wisdom and small fixes like just the one you said that that has gone into the plone uh, has gone into the plone user interface that's also now being poured into into Volto for the last few years. 
uh, with a lot of wisdom and these small things that make editing uh, uh, content and managing content in Plone uh, uh, a pleasure. And I'm, I'm sometimes I'm, I'm a bit like, oh no, oh no. So they're chasing the UI and then some things get, 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 uh, get dropped or get changed. But then after a while you see uh, a stabilization and people, hey, look, but we had this uh, better in the, in the last version. Can, can we tweak a bit? And then you've got something which is both uh, uh, new, uh, uh, better, shiny or up to date, but also still has this, this previous wisdom in there because people will miss it when they, when they go from version to version. Yeah, and uh, w one of these, um, not, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, let's move on. Um, so yeah. w what's new? Obviously, uh, it's uh, already almost October and the uh, Plone Conference is uh, approaching really fast. Uh, there's, um, I got roped into helping with the organization of uh, some some minor stuff. So a lot of work is done by Imio, who's organi who are organizing the conference. And, uh, oh, sorry about that. I need to Silent switch it. off my phone, I guess. Yeah. Yes, and, and um, you've also always been uh, uh, quite involved with the trainings. Yeah, we have ex excellent trainings coming in. Uh, so, and I'm not, I'm not really that excited about the trainings in place because you're sitting there in a room with, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 or only five people. Uh, the more important thing is that when you do update or write a new training, uh, you're updating documentation that is used by the whole community. So I'm really excited about the installation training that Eriko and Jens are doing. Uh, excited about the theming Plon 6 Classic training. Uh, that's the schedule. Thank you. Uh, I'm really excited. I, uh, I convinced um, um, uh, Johannes Ragam to do a training on not only developing patterns uh, with mockup and pattern slip, but actually how to use them in uh, in your templates and in Tiny MCE in Plone Classic. So that's really nice. I yeah. do uh, I do two trainings at the same time. I do a migration training on top of um, uh, Mastering Plone. Obviously, I take a break during that uh, part of Mastering Plone. Um, yeah, you got me into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, you didn't. You're you did Katja to do. I'm helping to do Katja. I'm, I'm full. I, 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 I been on and off a bit with Mastering Plone training, but it was, I don't know, five, years, six years ago that I helped out with some yeah. trainings. It's then, a while ago. So. Yeah. I'll, I'll jump in this afternoon, and then you can focus on the on the migration training. And there's I'll another help out one by, by Tiberiu and Victor, Effective Volto. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people there, and I'm, I'm really excited about the documentation for that, because if you're doing a real-life Volto project, this is basically the place to go for, oh, yeah, if I really have an issue, a problem, uh, and I want to understand how to solve that, that's where you will end up um, looking. I'm very, that's that's going to be exciting. I think I'll, I'll just, I'm not sure yet if I'll just join Mastering Plone for the whole day or if I also still want to go to Effective Photo. I'm very curious uh, how, the, how the combination with Tiberiu, which is an excellent trainer, by the way, uh, uh, which uh, he has done some excellent trainings uh, last year uh, and 2020 on Volto, on adding, uh, creating add-ons and really going into detail with all the stuff you need to know. And Victor is, of course, the the de facto uh, a photo release manager who has a way huge overview of everything that has been put in there, what's there now and where, which direction they want to go to. So I'm really excited about that combination, having both the, 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 the rigor and detail of Tiberiu and the overview of Victor. Let's, let's see how that, uh, what, that, that must be a very nice training. And what you said, Johannes, uh, Ragam, the, the classic part, uh, the, uh, he will most definitely also explain more about module federation, which is the new system that will finally replace the, the pain and hurt uh, we've had with require JS in Plone 5. So that will also be a very interesting training for people to follow uh, if they, if they uh, 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 still use Plone uh, 6 Classic. Yeah. Um, let's talk about talks. Um, talks so there's going to be uh, a ton of talks also. Um, I have a couple of favorites that I want to shout out. I'm excited yeah. that not only that David is back in the, uh, in the, in, in the community doing clone, he's also giving a talk that I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's about testing past, present and future of how we test clone. And, uh, believe it or not, he'll introduce a way how to, uh, or demo a way and show it how to uh, test clone using PyTest, which is everyone else's uh, favorite testing framework. A clone still uses unit test. Um, which I actually like uh, because it's uh, very 
it works similar to Plo, how Plone works with browser views, classes, inheritance, whatever. Uh, these init methods and stuff like setup and stuff. But yeah, PyTest is, is obviously uh, favored by most people uh, in other frameworks. So that's going to be interesting to see how we uh, test our own projects with PyTest and how we may migrate uh, Plone to my PyTest at some point. And I'm also super excited that there's going to be a lot of case studies. I, I think at a conference, having case studies for from universities, for, about Volto projects, about migrations, like not only these technical talks that I like to give, but actually do. Um, this is a real life project, and this is how we solve this yep. issue. This is this is always a, a great uh, great experience having these talks, and there's there's a lot of these. And I must say, in, in the past, I mean, sometimes I've also been to other conferences uh, uh, about on the CMSs in the past. Then you've got these, these customer use cases, and it's blah, 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 nice product, nice product. Use us as a solution provider, nice product. <laughs> but I must say, with, with, with the Plone conference uh, talks about, then often it really goes into detail. They're not afraid to show off of which add-ons they've used, technologies yep. they've used, issues they've run into. So it's, I must say, in general, uh, uh, the, 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 the customer use cases or demos are, are really interesting to also follow. Yeah, yeah they're, they're mostly not trying to sell you something, but trying to show you how, 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 you, how they did something and how you can benefit from that, like copying some uh, learning from their mistakes using add-ons that they developed for that, stuff like that. So it's really good for the community. It's not, it's not a sales pitch in most cases, at least. Yeah, uh, and but if I, you do, and if you do, we you've been warned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. I, 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 talking about sales, there's a talk I'm excited about. It's called uh, "Nobody Cares About Plones: Selling a Plone Website to Somebody Who Doesn't Care." So th that is that's a great. Uh, it wins uh, the prize for the best title so far, uh, at least from my end. Uh, by uh, Talia Byers and Carol Kalitz from Juicy, a uh, company from South Africa, which I think is great that they're coming to Europe. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited about that because. Obviously, um, a lot of clone companies are super busy, at least those who are doing uh, Volto uh, are, uh, but most others are also super busy. But we're, yeah, sales is hard and we've been discussing that and having a talk about that, how to sell clone, uh, that, that's going to be uh, interesting. I'm, I'm excited about hearing what they think they sh we should do or they do and we should also do. Yeah, it's like look, we, we chatted a bit about uh, our last, uh, 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 the last TPM. I said I want to add a bit more of sales and marketing uh, to the to the podcast uh, the next season, which is not the real season because we're going to just continue numbering. But still, um, and yeah, we all like. I think we also then said for for plone solution providers or or small development companies like you have and I work for uh, uh, it. Uh, you focus on the technology, you focus on the functionality, you focus on supporting your users, um, but there's a whole sales and marketing uh, 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 part that is before that, but also during and after you've uh, 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 delivered a new site project. And it's very cool to see uh, feedback for that. Um, so my favorite, my, my favorite talks, uh, if you did notice, we, we also are going to do some talks ourselves, but we keep, we save them for last, uh, to our own talks. Um, I have been chatting this spring, I think, with Asko Suka about, uh, his, uh, uh workflow, uh, 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 solutions he's been working on for quite a few, uh, uh years already. He's working for the University of Yveskile. They have a huge blown setup, but also all kinds of different add-ons and side projects. And he has been very active with uh, using a workflow engines to to have all kind to do all kinds of workflow or, or process related things uh, for the university. And I, I chatted with him a bit. I don't remember exactly when, but it was like, yeah, I've, I've got this issue with uh, with blown with uh, uh, Easy Form, where I would like to have um, uh, I would like to have a confirmation. So I, uh, somebody fills in a form and then we'd like to first that it gets confirmed before it really gets sent through uh, to the, the person processing the form, registering something. And we so build the something. The results are just, is, are submitted, uh, but not sent off. It's but, like, but like, like pending. It's like, yeah, really like pending, workflow, like pending. but for the results of an yeah, easy form. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. We, we built that something like that many, many years ago for still Plone Form Gen for Plone 4 as a spam prevention. So the email address, it was, it was the, the form was held a uh, kind of, of the, the form contents was buffered until you uh, received an email where you clicked a link back to the plone site and then the, the submission was made final and then it was, was processed. 
But I've got, I've got a, a more complex one where we said, okay, look, uh, it's an intranet case. Uh, an employee asks for a new laptop, uh, but the manager has to approve it. And then things get oh, yeah. tricky. So I pitched it kind of like, hey, Asko, you are using uh, Kamunda for, for other workflow things. Uh, and, and is that possible? And that's happened to me a few times before. I, I, I think I, I can only take like 5% credit of, of mentioning this something in, in a subject to Asko. And then Asko starts thinking and building and running. And he has his own Twitch uh, channel now for, I think, a year. Yep. Where with people he collaborates on on Kamunda uh, 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 things and integrations, and he does very cool stuff there. Also talks, I think, about Mo uh, 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 Nomad uh, uh, and another uh, interesting uh, DevOps subjects. And he kind of ran away with my idea. He has now built an, an, an add-on uh, 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 in Plone that kind of gives you a view into a workflow that's running in Kamunda. Uh, uh, where you can can also do these kinds of things. And uh, to my shame, Asko, sorry, I haven't had much time. I've checked into your Twitch uh, 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 videos every week when I, I get a notice on my on my iPhone and, and look a bit. I haven't been able to test it yet, but it's really cool stuff. And he's going to do a talk about that. <laughs> cool. And we should we should do a whole a whole episode about workflow. There's uh, we could inter um, in invite uh, other people, uh, Toyni, for example, who could talk about Alpha Flow. If you remember that, uh, it's a Zope extension uh, a replacement for DC workflow. Then DC mm -hmm. workflow has a ton of exciting features, but, uh, on top of DC workflow, uh, the late um, Jakob. Uh, 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 Max Jakob wrote Jacob, yeah. a, uh, a system to, to apply for university and you have multiple reviewers. So you have parallel review processes that need to, uh, that need to run as uh, all built with the workflow engine of Plone. Yeah, the, the, the Plone has, has always had a very powerful workflow engine, uh, but it's a bit like, 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 like uh, 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 England uh, uh, leading the Industrial uh, Revolution and then after 50 years getting catched up by other countries that did uh, the second version of it. Uh, there has been a huge uh, amount of, 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 of uh, development on, workflow, on separate workflow engines like, like the Comunda project. Uh, uh, where you can visually with BPMN models design your workflow, add uh, uh, all kinds of things to that, and then actually load that model in the in the workflow engine. Uh, and it's it it's it there are huge leaps there, and it will be very interesting to see uh, 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 what integration he has made and what it does. Uh, very quickly, some other topics which uh, go are close to uh, uh, close to my heart: uh, video. Uh, you see, the last Kivi, uh, I think a colleague of Asko will talk about video capabilities in Plone, where they've built a video platform where Plone is one of the central components. And Eric Berho will be talking about searching video contents, which is also something like, wow, you can yeah, add that to by Plone. By the way, uh, the, the PloneConf.org uh, website now has a, a search button uh powered by nuclear who's a i think a silver sponsor of the conference yeah. and it searches it's the company it eric ai Rostro. yeah exactly it uses ai to um parse the text of videos so it only re uh, returns video content so if you look for something uh if you search for something plone related you'll end up uh, all the with all these training videos that we did in the last uh, two offline uh online conferences and uh, conference talks and whatnot. So that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's so not only, he's not only giving a talk; they're showcasing the the technology on the conference website. Actually. Yeah. Very cool. And then there's a whole uh, slew of of uh, very interesting photo talks. A photo is really picking up steam now, but also with not the oh look, I can uh, not to not to be uh, uh, dismissive about that. But you that now look at the titles: deep dive into the internals of photo. Uh, by Alok Kumar and Piero Nicoli is going to talk about the anatomy of a Volto project. And then I'm like, as an integrator, ah, now I've, I've been dabbling with Volto, creating some small sites, testing things also for the podcast. Uh, uh, but now it gets interesting for me as well, because just starting a Volto site and dragging some things around is nice. But if you are responsible for uh, uh, hosting it for a customer, you really have to know a bit more, and then it will take a lot of time. So I'm I'm to to really master that stuff. So I'm I really hope that those talks and also other photo talks uh, uh, will give integrators like me uh, 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 more uh, of a view behind the scenes and also best practices for 
past the the nice blocks because the blocks are of course the huge selling point of photo but there's Obviously. still a whole cms behind there yeah, we, no, we not only need these talks, we need these projects as uh, online resources available because, uh, face it, uh, we are lazy. We love to copy and paste code from other successful projects that either we did or other people did. So as uh, the more uh, examples for uh, successful Volto projects are available online and documentation and code examples and even packages. Uh, the better. I'm excited about Plone.org, for example, the new release of uh, the Plone.org website, because that's going to be built with Volto, and Red Turtle has written a lot of really nice blocks uh, that we're going to use for that website, and that's all open source. It's all available, and all the other blocks that we, some, some of them we already talked about. So that's how we do our project. We just steal from the best. Okay. Yeah. Um, our own talks. Philip. Oh, yeah. You I'm, I'm, could yeah, I'm resist. Gonna, as usual. <laughs> I couldn't resist um, giving a talk about uh, a migration project that I'm doing for the University of Oxford. They have like 150 uh, Plone sites and they're running on Plone 4.3 uh, with a lot of custom code that is called Haiku. It's actually a high quality, good, good system. We're going to demo that also and talk a lot about uh, the migration process and how that's going to work. So that's a uh, use case for uh, higher education, how do you, how, how you use Plone for that, and also about migrations, which is obviously the topic that is closest to my heart at the moment. It's not migrating to Volto, so, so it's migrating to Plone 6 Classic. Yeah. And what are you going to talk about? More, yeah, I, I, more marketing? Yeah, like I announced, I wanted to, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm every year I'm, I'm a bit like, I love variation. So last year I did this, this, uh, <laughs> hilarious but also quite serious talk about the whole uh, SOAP and PLOAN learning curve uh, 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 for people. Uh, and this year I want to do a little bit at sales and marketing. So I have an announcement for my PLOAN talk, PLOAN for managers, how to achieve good ROI, return on investment for your organization and really use the and value the strengths of PLOAN. That's a, it's a good marketing title, actually. Yeah, you have to adapt your title to the. Otherwise, it would look like uh, uh, what did we last? Plone, uh, uh, plone image skills or a uh, 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 small yeah. title? No, then you should go business. And so it's it's yeah. basically uh, uh, I've I've had some some uh, 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 questions from from mostly other companies, but also of course I've been working with Plone now for also f more than fifteen or sixteen years at Zest now, and what I've noticed is that. Like you just said, we developers are lazy and love to copy and, and paste code. But the truth is, of course, we're horrendously busy and it takes just a lot of time to figure out our own small parts of the things we, we contribute to, to, to the open source project. And then it's so nice if you can copy it's all the 80 20 principle what I, what I, what we have like you create 20% and you you get 80% and if we all do that you'll get a, yeah. a very nice and rich and, and vibrant ecosystem and software uh, thing. But, Don't pitch but, it too much because otherwise nobody, everybody is going to know what you're going to, what you will say. No, no, because this is development. I'm, I'm actually not going to talk about development because the, 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 the other reason is, of course, we are, we I always, we don't have enough time and there's always something busy and something else. And that's what I want to talk a bit more like Plone is, 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 is a software system. It's technology, it's functionality, but to really, to really use Plone, uh, uh and to use any software package, you need to have more support. You need to have, have a manager that actually cares about that. That, uh, that that uh, that software system and also recognizes that there has to be end user support there has to be a planning for the years to come there's this whole nasty business about supported and LTS versions which we just talked in detail and for many managers these kinds of things um, if if you don't they don't have to understand them fully but they have to know they are there and they have to know and and arrange that's why you're a manager that somebody in your organization, takes care of that or that your so blown solution provider or integrator is is taking care of that and that's the part i want to i want to talk about everything except for the software <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in, fi in 40 minutes so oh, we'll God. Oh. yeah it will be i'm already st i've already started i have to 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 remove uh things uh 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 and and the truth is uh, and it, it, it applies to all systems basically it's, it's all yes, projects you could, 
uh, this talk, clone, I, uh, focused only. I could swap clone for WordPress or for Drupal, yeah. and then I think everything would still apply. And and of course, it, it sounds a bit like, oh, I'm going to tell managers. Uh, no, actually, it's the other way around. I think this is what, what the clone community in its sales and marketing, and we as integrators, even though we're so so limited on our time, uh, we should we should tell this. It's it's part of the the clone community uh, uh, story and part of the open source story that you have to you have to participate in. In, in the community a bit as well and take care of all these surrounding things. But that's not the manager's fault. That's our fault. We should tell them that uh, when they start and we should uh, accompany them and, and uh, uh, point them to, hey, look, uh, maybe uh, we should do a bit more of this this year and maybe a bit less of features. So that's uh, that's a long talk. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's good, good yeah. homework for the Plum Foundation. Um, a lot of that, or the whole community. Yeah. So, but, but there's more. Yeah. But not uh, only the, the giving the honest, these talks. The so, honest so for now you. We're, yeah, we're, we're announcing. Uh, we're doing a special thing for you only. Uh, there's going to be a live episode of the Plo Newsroom at the conference on ooh, Thursday, just before the party. Oh, I didn't and, know that yet. Okay, yeah. before the party. Oh, thank you, thank you. Not Friday morning. No, Friday morning. <laughs> that will be will be hard. Now, I think everybody's going to be already exhausted, and uh, they won't have any brain function left to actually listen to what we're saying or actually critique that. Uh, so we just have to make some stupid jokes, and they're going to be happy. No, I'm, we, we hope it's going to be an interesting uh, live episode. It, we, we haven't decided. No, what we're still all we're we're pitching doing, ideas to each other. But yeah, obviously it needs to be a bit more than okay. What happened in the last one and a half weeks, which will not be that much. So it's going to be a couple of highlights from what actually happened in the last year before the last conference, or maybe ever. Um, yeah, so that's going to be cool because it's yeah it's the first conference in three years and we're going to meet live people so we're going to have a live audience and we're going to include the live audience in the uh, in the episode so there's going to be light audience participa participation time um, expect uh, weird things to happen maybe you could organize a band Philip yeah the plone band the plone uh, well, band there is a pl it is a band it's called named after a band we, we should, they actually put out a new record uh, a while ago we should invite them for for a, a like a pause but we uh, have a, we, I mean, you're not music. The, you're not the only musician in the plone community i remember ramon playing yeah, very he nice did a great then, show uh, at the conference in barcelona it's barcelona in the evening so <laughs> we're still munching on ideas um should we <laughs> I'm a bit afraid. Should we ask for ideas from people? Sure. Just uh, shoot yeah. us a line and we'll ignore them yeah. all. Just uh, uh, send us a private message on Discord, uh, one of us or whatever, and we'll, we'll also consider those if they're reasonably and uh, manageable in time. Yeah. And, so and looking forward to that, Philip. Yeah. So now it's time for our big feature. And the topic <laughs> is um, we're already at, four, at minute 42 and we thought we we're going to do a, a short episode. So let, let's keep this short, but let's let's do this still uh, at, at least a little bit. Uh, yeah. We want to talk about something that existed from very early on, uh, but uh, yeah, in, in different iterations. And it stopped existing in Volto, at least it doesn't exist yet. We're For talking now. obviously about Portlets. Yeah, so Philip and I were like, okay, yeah, we should at least do another TPN uh, before our, our not now so secret anymore uh, uh, live episode. Uh, um, a feature, we always have a feature except for the news and Portlets was, uh, yeah, something that has, that Portlets are really powerful, uh, but also a bit complex. And with the whole new, uh, 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 with, with the advent of, of all the, composite page layouts like cover and mosaic and uh, and others we've had in the past which we did a whole feature on like three or four episodes uh, ago um portals are these nice things where you say okay uh, your whole site is a, is a is a is a folderish hierarchical structure and on any node in that structure you can say okay but when you show anything from this node and down in the folder uh, show me a nice site message and we call those things in in plone portlets and we also have viewlets and we also have other things, but portlets are the thingies that an editor can create and manage and show uh, themselves. And viewlets are a bit lower in the stack where developers can say, oh, look, whenever you are on this content type, show something in, in, a, in a viewlet manager slot. So yeah. portlets are the user editable uh, 
sidebar, that's, that's a bit traditional, of course, sidebar, because you can put them nowadays, in, since Plone 5, uh, by default, you can also put them at the bottom. Yep. There have been add-ons to put them uh, at, on top of pages. Yep. But that's the basic gist of, of portlets. And the, 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 the thing with portlets is inheritance. Yeah, so here uh, I am screen share for those who are only listening to audio. I'm sharing the screen of a Plone 6 classic demo site, and uh, it has the manage portlets uh, action in the toolbar. And when you click on that, you can see uh, the manage portlets. And since I'm doing that not on the site root, but on the demo folder, which is inside, that's the actually the language root folder en, so en slash demo slash manage portlets you already see the portlets that are there and it already explains everything that you need to know and it will confuse the hell out of you because you can obviously add new portlets and clone ships with a good number of portlets. The most important one, I guess, is the static text portlet, but there's way more. There's like automatic news aggregation portlets. There's the navigation portlet, which is already um, uh, configured by default. There are collection portlets where you can point to a collection and it shows the content of that collection and a calendar portlet and whatnot. I'm gonna, not going to th go through that list. So you can add one. I'm not going to do that uh, static. I'm uh, going to add a demo uh, static portlet uh, just for show uh, some text. It can has, have links and images and stuff and has some uh, additional features that you can he add here. And now... I have a static portlet and when I go to the demo folder, I see that static portlet on the left side because I added it to the left and I can go into that folder to a page and I can still, I still see that portlet. So the portlets are inherited down the tree, but since I added it to the demo uh, folder only, when I go to the site route, it's going to be gone. There's no portlet there. And uh, to make things even worse or better, um, when I go to a folder inside uh, that folder, for example, uh, and I manage the portlets, I can configure that, and I can say, okay, I, kinda s I can stop inheriting these portlets, uh, and I can, um, or I can configure that. So I yes, can you're, stop you're continuing from a blank. You're, you're starting from a blank slate. You also see yeah. here in, in the screenshot by Philip on the left side, because you're now a folder below the the node, the folder on which you configured the portlet. It just looks like a link and you can't really configure it. If you yeah. now go uh, to the parent, go to parent folder, then, ah, there it is. And that's just, now you're on the level of the hierarchy where you define the portlet and now you can also delete or remove it here. Yeah. If you're on another level and it's inherited, for example, on the on the right side, Philip, you can see still see two default yes. portlets that are created for every Plone Classic site, events, and, and if you click on the link, then you go to that level. And this is, if, if, if people start to evaluate or test Plone for the first time, then, oh, uh, a nice clean Plone site, and they add a news item, they publish it, and then suddenly, poof, on the right side, there's the, the news portlet showing up because there's a new uh, news item in your Plone site and the portlet picks that up and shows only the, the published ones, if I'm uh, not mistaken, by default. And then people are like, where's that coming from? How's that? <laughs> and then you have to start explaining portlets. Uh, uh, and as you said, Philip, there, there, you, you could make uh, things uh, 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 much simpler by doing not this inheritance, but it's a really powerful feature for larger uh, uh, websites, larger intranets, where you have like uh, uh, sections for support or for products or for services or for whatever you, and you want to add a notification there that's for an event or for something else. And that power, portals are really powerful there and portals really shine there. That is um, true. And there's two thing, two more things that I want to show here, because um, most of you have, if you ever worked with Plone, have seen have been, seen these sites, uh, this site, the managed portlet site. But there is like stuff that you very few people uh, use and know. That's group portlets and content type portlets, uh, because you out of the box, Plone gives you a user interface to say, uh, for example, the group reviewers can can only and only them have this portlet in this portlet manager, left, right, bottom. And this content type has this additional portlet. And I'm quickly going to show you how you do that. You need to configure your site. So the groups are obviously in the group settings. So you go to your users, users and groups settings. Oh, not this one. Uh, groups here. 
And when you click on a group, for example, reviewers, you have a tab said group portlets, and then you have the manage group portlet site where you can configure a portlet for that group. And similar... Uh, very, very the, conveniently, Philip, there is a portlet that shows a content to be reviewed, which would be yes, excellent exactly. for exactly this user group. And this exactly. this feature, not not uh, only hooking into the hierarchy, but hooking into, into the groups uh, an, a logged in user is member of, or specific the content type, uh, goes back to the more extranet and, and, and intranet features of Plone that, uh, that require features like this. Yeah. And the second one is content. Uh, so there's like, that's a bit confusing because we have the content types control panel where you can edit and configure dexterity content types. And then we can have the, we have the content settings uh, control panel where you can configure all content types and various uh, settings there. For example, say a page, which is a document, has, uh, is globally edible, can have comments, is visible in searches and stuff like that. And a ver ver has a versioning uh, policy. And here you can uh, say also there's the link. configure the portlets for, oh, and there's the error, excellent. Uh, <laughs> that, use, that, 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 that should work. Oh, there's the icon. It uses get icon. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To do. File. To better, do. better to still. There's a bug. Uh, someone please write a bug report about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the basics, and uh, obviously there's a whole ecosystem around that of a new port of portlets that you can um, that you can download. If you go to Pipey and look for portlet, uh, I think there's like more than 300 search results. That's a, it's a ton of portlet packages or packages that mention portlet at least, but a lot of them are still uh, can be usable. Um, Fred, do you have some 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 of them that you want to? tell us about? Yes, that's my part. So, uh, indeed, Philip, as you said, there have been uh, tons of portlets being added uh, in the past. The, the portlet system hasn't really changed since Plone 4 or Plone, even Plone 3. I am i don't dare to say, but it's kind of stabilized Plone, around... Plone 3. It, it changed in Plone 5 because we switched the form library from uh, yeah, Formlib yeah, to yeah. ZZZ form, but that's just, uh, that's a minor... Yes, yes. Minor, and it's, it's a change, but the portlet engine is the same. It's uh, Martin Espelli's fault, and it's excellent. It's a five times multi adapter, by the way. Yeah, I'll stop with that. Sorry. <laughs> stop with that. Stop with that. Or I'll explain it again to people at the Mastering Plone training how adapters work. <laughs> no. So, indeed, so there have been some changes, but portals have been rather stable. As you said, uh, Plone 5, we switched to Z3C form instead of the SOAP formlib library. And now, it, with the upcoming Plone 6, uh, you'll need to update your templates a bit because we're now on the uh, shiny Bootstrap 5.2 and also to try to uh, reuse most of the uh, Bootstrap 5 classes. And that has been done for the core Plone system. Uh, but if you add more, uh, if you add custom portals or you have uh, uh, add on portlets, uh, you should maybe check. And, uh, Probably there will be some updates for the most uh, most uh, uh, most used portlets. What I want to talk a bit about, show some things is is okay. Portlets are nice. Uh, portlets are are kind of isol isolations, like like blocks are with with upcoming uh, default photo sites in 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 Plone six. If you if you switch to photo. Um, but there's also some, some management on the site. And the, the, the reason for this feature was I got triggered by a post on communityplone.org last week where somebody asked like, hey, I want to add a style, uh, 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 a style field to my portlets. And you were able to do that. And I've got now a test site where I can go to, uh, they'll just add them here, manage portlets, uh, manage them all and add a portlet here. I've installed an add-on portlet called the RER Portlet Advanced Static from, if I'm not mistaken, Red Turtle, but I'm afraid it's a region in Italy uh, for which they uh, create, uh, which they have as a customer. Or was it Red Domino? I'm, anyway, this is a custom portlet and it's static text, but it has a lot of more uh, 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 fields added, for example, a background image or uh, an internal link, but also here a portlet class. And I can just add here uh, some styling here, or I can select something from a drop down menu. And then this special, this custom portlet will have in its, uh, uh, in its HTML, uh, will have, why are you, ah, there you are. We'll have in its HTML, we'll have an extra class or extra thing. So this is how you can create your own custom portlet. The thing is, it's a, it's a rather uh, 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 common feature to ask for any portlet. So I would like to add a style to any portlet. Can you do that? Yes, you can. It's called an add-on co called uh, collective portlet metadata. 
and some shameless, no, no, shameless. We, we created it uh, many years ago for uh, for a plan foresight, and we are in the process of upgrading that one now. And Maurits this summer uh, upgraded collective portlet metadata to support at least plan 5.2, but also it should be plan 6. But I've kept it safe for my demo now. I'm still using plan 5.2. And what that does is that if I go to uh, the manage portlets, there's this extra link here. It's not in that fancy style, but we should make it again into a button that has general settings. So I've got here a test portlet that's configured on the homepage, like you just did in your, your first uh, demo of the portlets. But then there's also general settings. And here you've got an extra layout with the CSS values and other things, which you can also add. So you can exclude it from search. You can make it a local portlet. And you can also, in the, in the main control panel, you can add styles. And this style will be added. And it's available for every portlet, also for... Uh, a static text portlet uh, uh, or a custom other portlet. So that's a really nice addition. Um, second thing I was thinking about, also some customizations we did. Um, I've added a few portlets here. If you look at the home page, uh, there's a text portlet on the plan site route and there's a text portlet on the home page itself. So this one is actually the same as uh, oh, no, dash. <laughs> There it is, front page. So there's a portlet here. But if you're, if you really know your way around portlets, you might see here that the uh, uh, the order is reversed because it shows first the site route and then. But if you normally in Plone, the most, the 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 lowest, uh, uh, the, the 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 lowest portlet in the, the the deepest you are in the hierarchy, that one is shown first, and then the others are added. You can actually patch this, and that's what I did for the small demo. So there's in the code. Uh, for the site, I used a plan CLI to scaffold a, a small build out. I've added one test site add on. And there's one patch here. And I'm not going to go into much detail here, but I'm sharing the code now on my screen. If you ever want to do anything with the ordering of the portlets, and you can go completely wild there, uh, create your own custom portlet retriever. It's coming from plan uh, portlets. Yeah. Uh, there's this add-on, uh, how's it called? A portlet, weighted portlets, something like that. Portlet weighting where you weigh, uh, weigh like the weight, <laughs> how heavy it is. And yeah, you, you can, can add a number assign to numbers yeah. to different yeah. portlets. And uh, they it, it takes uh, like inherited and local portlets together and like uh, calculates uh, in, in, uh, the, the order ar around that. Um, I used that in a couple of projects. It yeah. is insane, and you can break your brain. I, I um, checked it last last with the math uh, alone. last evening for the for, but it's it's not it's not available on Plone Five. Actually, there is an unreleased version for Plone Five Zero. Oh, so I might have something. If, might have had if you need to it, do then you that. might have to do then. Then uh, don't forget to register it in the adapter factory. Another small patch, uh, uh, which is convenient if you have a larger site where you want to restrict portlets to certain users, um, because th that's also something that comes in. If you can edit uh, 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 the context, so a folder, if you have permissions to edit uh, content in a certain part of your plan site, you are normally also allowed to add portlets there. And as we explained, portlets are very powerful, very nice, but you also might have some content editors that you'd like to focus them on the content and not on the portlets they can create. For this, you can in Plone uh, create your own role, and that's exactly what I've done here. I'm an admin now, and I can see uh, uh, and add every portlets everywhere. I've created a separate user. I have to get over here. No, 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 not close to Windows. Where are you? There are you. Oh. You see, I, I have to get get used to working again. <laughs> there it is. Ta-da. And it's my own user, Fred van Dijk. I can do nothing in this site until I go to the test folder. And there I've given myself permissions. And you see, I can now manage, uh, manage portlets here. Um, but this is actually a setting. So what I've done is in the, uh, and it's, it's, it's really small. Uh, the only thing you need is in profiles default to have the default role map which sets the, 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 the permissions and the roles on the whole plone site where you add a new role portlet manager. And this is, I, I think I'll share these snippets somewhere on, on a GitHub gist or something later today. Um, and then you add a few, there are a few portlets that have their own permissions, so you have them add them extra, but the main one is manage portlets. So you define a new role uh, uh, portlet manager and you remove, I think the, what you also do here is remove the default one from edit. And then there is, 
um, one configuration here that says, okay, look, there's this new role product manager, EOZCML. And then there's another three liner here with the roles that says, oh, look, here's the actual object, uh, which implements the I sharing page role. And this one is important because if you do this, then you can, as a manager, go to uh, ah. any uh, location here, go to the sharing top, and there's a new role here. And this so is the, actually, this is the yeah, missing link. Demo two features in one go. That is slick. Oh, explain what did I do extra? Uh, yeah, just extending a role, the user interface for the sharing tab to sh uh, to uh, allow how to how to manage allow yes. users to manage new roles. Uh, yeah, so you can add new new roles on the sharing page, nice. indeed, which comes from Plone Up Workflow interfaces. Our sharing page role. Uh, and the other one is that you have to add the role itself, of course, to the to the actually to the SOAP machinery because this is this is just SOAP permissions there. Yeah. And then I can say, oh look, for this test folder, uh, let's go to the sharing tab. And here you see there's this Fred van Dijk, uh, which has permissions because it is on the page. And I should go to the folder. And now I can say, nope, Fred, sorry, no portlets for you. And then when I go back, demo effect, da 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 da. -da Ah, uh, no cookie for you. No more portlets. <laughs> so now if I go to the test folder and do the contents, you see the link is also missing there. It was still buffered there. So no, no cookie for me. Good. Can manage portlets, save, and we're back in business. Good. Really nice, really nice to add this. Um, yeah. Last so, one, Philip. And, and again, this is a, yep. it's a permission. You can manage that permission in a workflow. So make it so that once a folder is published, you can't ah, add yeah, any, sure. any more portlets. So, um, well, yeah. a whole, Last a whole one. Uh, walkthrough of the Plone uh, mechanism there. We have a client who has a custom permission that actually also shows up in the sharing tab because it did something similar in the past. And they named uh, naming things, obviously, is the very hard. Uh, it's ca it's called can more. It can me. He, he can. <laughs> so that user can what? what? He can yes. do more. He can more. order lunch, whatever. It's, yeah, like, it's yeah, super yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. But so, they they obviously know what they can do more, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, one thing you can do more, or which you normally can all do a lot, is add a lot of portlets, like you showed. Uh, so here I'm an up in, and here you see this huge list of portlets, but uh, quite a few of them are not really le relevant to, to content editors, like the login portlet or uh, uh, items, the review list we talked. And this, this can confuse uh, users that start, uh, or editors that start using Plone and, and, and get access to the, the powerful portlets. So what we have, have is another small add-on, which is called collective restrict portlets. And with restrict portlets, you can limit the portlets that are hidden from normal users. And this one works exactly the other way that you would first expect. Only these two are available and all these are filtered. So I filter away all these portlets and we did this on, on purpose when we created it a few years ago. Uh, because if you would add another uh, add-on, a portlet add-on to your site and we would by default only select the ones that are active, then somebody would add a new portlet add-on and they wouldn't show any portlet unless they knew that there was a restrict portlets thingy here. Yeah. So that's why we do it the other way around. I've now limited the portlets to only the static text portlet and the portlet advanced static. So when I go to my Fred van Dijk user again here and I go to manage portlets and I'm not a, I'm not a manager, you will see that I can only add these two portlets, which cleans up the interface a lot and can uh, avoids people from adding all kinds of fancy uh, portlets that uh, should not really be uh, in their place. And there's an even cleaner interface for portlets. Uh, it's called Volto because it doesn't have any interface for Volto, for portlets. You can't add portlets there. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's the, the, the thing. Evening. Our our long. This was a long introduction and demo indeed to the to the subject we wanted to touch at the beginning, which is indeed where are the portlets in Volto? Yeah. So th th there is. A, a, we could talk about that for a long time, and we should talk about that, but with more people who know more about that. So I, I sent an email to Victor and Tiberio yesterday evening, hoping that they would al already like give me a text snippet that I can read out here from them, but we don't have that yet. So we'll move that to another episode and discuss Volto, uh, Volto and portlets or slots and stuff like that. 
in there uh, user manageable blocks that are inherited so that because that's like in the main point and you can add content and can restrict that yeah, yeah. so but, but Philip, one, Philip, one of to, the main points is obviously that we in volto we don't have the grid uh, the, the the rows the three lo rows layout which it has uh, plone sport, uh, pl sported plone since the beginning with the left, uh, not rows, columns, obviously three column layout. Um, Volto doesn't have that. It's just a, um, it's, it's a list from top to bottom and not from left to right. So there but it's are also solutions. Philip, Philip, it, it, there are solutions. I was I almost spoiled, uh, the, 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 the end, uh, conclusion here when I started the demo. I mean, we've had a composite uh, layouts already with uh, Mosaic, with, we did a whole session, a whole, whole, uh, special on that. The problem is, of course, it's usually, it's getting very complicated for editors if they have a composite page layout where you already can create multiple columns. There is responsiveness nowadays at mobile first. And then on top of that, there are also still portlets getting inserted. And that's the thing. And we are now like uh, pretending that nothing has been done in Volto, but that's not true. The last three years, uh, people have been furiously working on, on customer projects and implementing parts of, of the portlet things and inheritance for those specific customer projects and, and actually testing and piloting these things. Uh, Tiberiu has also done one or two presentations on it, I think, at the last bone uh, conference, uh, where they are called slots or, 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 or Fulets Plus or, or thing. The thing is, it's, it's complicated. You don't want yeah. to, to confuse editors. And like I said, with responsiveness and mobile first, um, um, it will take some time to get a really, to, to get a solution that's not uh, worse by just uh, uh, stacking uh, a composite page layout on top of an already existing enterprise feature uh, in, in Plone. And that takes, as I said before, we, we iterate and we try to improve things. And this is one of the things uh, that we'd like to discuss with people at the Plone conference. Uh, there has been a lot of work in Volta already in the, in the, in the down, but uh, Victor and others are probably, and uh, uh, me as well, because I have some sites that I would like to uh, uh, have portraits on when I switch to Volto. Um, these, this is also where conference, what conferences are for. Yes. Chatting definitely. with each other. And we finally can do that again after almost three years. Yeah. There's a ticket actually in the Volto repository. It's uh, 1,430. So they're busy, wow. they're busy doing tickets and it's actually a really old one already. I think it was started in 2020. Uh, it's called Slots in Volto, and it discusses the whole thing about portlets and uh, in, in Volto. And uh, yeah, we're very anxiously uh, or excited, uh, looking forward to uh, getting this to discussing that once Plon, uh, Volto 16 is final. At, uh, then, because it's not going to happen for Volto 16, obviously. No, no, this there's, is there's this no is, pull request, and there's no this approved, is big. Uh, architecture yet. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, that's an interesting discussion to have, and um, we hope something's going to happen at the conference. And I'm curious to all the other things that, I mean, we've now come up with this, hey, portal thing, but there are like at least six or seven or eight other subjects that we don't know about that people will want to have uh, also integrated or added or yeah, mold it into, into, uh, into the photo user interface. We're also almost feature complete. There has been a lot of work last year to, to get things that were in, in Plone 5, uh, uh, also exposed in, uh, in photo. There's a huge new user uh, and groups, uh, workspace. There are exposing, I think content rules are also added now, Philip, or am I? Yeah. Yeah. There's so an endpoint for that, at least I'm not sure about the user interface. Yeah. So looking forward to the conference and looking forward to a live audience. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's wrap this up. Thanks yeah. for listening. Uh, we'll see you on uh, what day is that, by the way? Uh, <laughs> When's October the conference 13, again? October 13, the Plone Newsroom, live on stage in Namur at uh, 5 p.m. Um, and I guess we'll see you before that at the conference. Yeah. Um, Don't forget to register for the trainings. Yes, don't if you haven't to done register so. for the conference. If you haven't just done so, it, you, you're going to miss out. Uh, tr the talks are going to be recorded, obviously. The trainings are not. Uh, so um, there is no, well, there obviously are a lot of excuses for not going there. Uh, one being uh, like a CO2, uh, spending CO2 on flights and money and time. Uh, but if you can make it, we'd love to see you there. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Philip. See you next month. And Bye. very hopefully live. Bye-bye, yes. people.